Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. So today I wanted to do a video in regard to Springathon. I wanted to talk about a few of the books that I have been uh, become interested in through watching various Springathon things. Uh, basically, I wanted to share a few specific accounts or channels that have created things during the Springathon um, or in relation to it. Um, that I found a lot of bookish inspiration from. So I'm gonna start off talking about the books that I found through Instagram. So first I wanted to mention Jasmine Alexa. Uh, she is amazing. I found her through her participation in the Nonfiction November photo challenge that I was doing with all of last year. And uh, she just has the most aesthetic and beautiful photographs, but also more importantly, I think she does really thoughtful, analytical, personal and just really well balanced book reviews to go along with her photographs and she likes a lot of Mediterranean uh, literature which is something that she is doing as a readathon monthly as well. Uh, but the book that I have been completely sold to have uh, to read by her uh, during the Springathon is Arctic Dreams by Barry Lopez and this is a fairly hefty book about um, the Arctic of course and I think one of the things especially that I was intrigued about uh, by reading her review of this is the the way that Barry Lopez examines uh, the problems of the Western world in uh, the pursuit of knowledge. Some of the quite problematic background to it and some of the things that has been left out in the equation or in the discussion of it. It just sounds fantastic and I've seen it referenced in a lot of nature books that I've read, uh, but her review of it uh, just made me want to, to read it as, as soon as possible, so I've actually ordered this already. Also, she has done a review of Ness by Barbara McFarlane uh, through a uh, academic journal that is open, uh, it's uh, free access to it. And I haven't read it yet, I've only read a bits of it, uh, but it was already really good what I saw of the beginning of this. So I would strongly urge you to check out her review of Ness and of Arctic Dreams and generally her account on Instagram you should uh, you should be following. Uh, you're definitely missing out if not. Then the next one is sort of in a similar vein in terms of the taste uh, of uh, nature writing and that is Gem from Places Between Pages is the account and she has been talking about a lot of uh, nature books during the Springathon challenge uh, and she is a big fan of Robert McFarlane specifically so basically all of his books I've been even more excited to read uh, after seeing her uh, talk about his writing and the importance that has had in her life. Uh, she is really thoughtful in her writing about these uh, books in, as well. Uh, so again, this is sort of both uh, a bookstagram, bookstagram recommendation to uh, this is an account that you should be you should be following, uh, and also she has definitely made me more interested in reading more of McFarlane uh, especially. Then we have a account that I found through the Springathon challenge and that is Obtusata and this uh, account during the Springathon challenge uh, created or shared a lot of uh, indigenous writers on nature which is something that I feel like uh, both uh, is not as talked about as it should be and so fascinating and definitely a different perspective and an important perspective in a genre that is so often um, male dominated and uh, white dominated so there's definitely a, a sort of a strong um, core of writers working in the nature genre. So it's just so refreshing to see other types of nature writing being talked about. And this account shared several books that sounded really good during the uh, Springathon challenge. Uh, one of the books that she shared that I had see that I'd had my eyes on before and that I'd seen in other um, 
areas but that I hadn't heard exactly what it was about is A Constant Hum by Alice Bishop. I think this is an Australian writer and she talks about this book as being about the bushfires which is kind of a topic that I really want to read more about after the horrible few years of uh, bushfires and uh, forest fires all over the world. It's become something that I definitely want to read more of, uh, read more about, and um, I hadn't heard that this one, this book was specifically about uh, sort of the aftermath of that. Uh, so I think it sounds fantastic and uh, I generally really want to read more Australian literature as well. Uh, this is just one of the many books that she got my eyes on. Again, a strong recommendation for the count. Actually, all of the Instagram uh, examples that I give are recommendations both for the account itself and for the books uh, uh, or and for the posts related to uh, the books that I found through them. Um, then the next one is Roxy. So uh, Roxy also has a booktube channel, uh, but she was reading uh, Upstream by Mary Oliver during the Springathon and she shared uh, a quote uh, in her stories which made me so excited to read this one. I've read some of Mary Oliver's um, poetry. It didn't really do that much for me but I think she, in general I really like the essay form and from the quotes that uh, Roxy shared uh, it just kind of sold me on this book so that is definitely something that I will be looking into this summer to uh, get my hands on this book. Um, in general again I have a lot of overlap with Roxy's taste uh, and I always find books that I'm interested in through uh, her Instagram or her uh, booktube channel uh, so I would link both of them below. And then the last Instagram thing I wanted to mention is Secret Bookcase, another really great uh, bookstagrammer and she specifically talked about a book in her Springathon wrap-up uh, that is called Where the Lemons Grow by Helena uh, Astley and this is a book that I've seen around a little bit uh, during the last few weeks I feel like and it always catches my eye because it has such a um, a beautiful cover design. Secret Bookcase specifically put up uh, the Springathon uh, wrap-up and said that they really liked this book and um, and wrote more about it obviously. Uh, I have been really interested in reading it so that just sort of pushed me over the edge and again this is a book that I've ordered now uh, because it sounds like the perfect book to read during the summer. It's basically a history or a book about uh, the lemon trees in Italy so it's sort of a combination of nature writing of Italy and a book about lemons. Uh, both things I love. Then I have a few YouTube or booktube videos that I wanted to highlight and some specific books also related to um, general springathon watching. So first we have Julia's book time. She did a um, video about Australian nature writing. In general I feel like uh, a lot of nature writing that is celebrated is uh, American centered or uh, British centered. Uh, so it's always nice to see a different uh, area of the genre and she talked, uh, Julia talked about several Australian nature books that she uh, was interested in. So basically I found most of the books that she talked about interesting. One of them was Where Song Began by Tim low and this I think is about the Australian songbirds. Uh, I think it will be particularly interesting because at the moment I'm reading A Sting of the Tail uh, by Dave Golson and he talks about the Australian um, nature landscape and uh, one of the reasons that uh, the birds specifically are so rich there is because for a long time there were no other predators uh, because of the isolation of Australia and New Zealand as well. Uh, so yeah I'm really looking forward to looking into all of the books that she talked about. Uh, I would gen generally really recommend watching this video. And then uh, A Book Olive also did a, a nature book recommendations video uh, in uh, in connection with Springathon, some of her favorites. Uh, and uh, I mean I have read The Soul of an Octopus on her recommendation so I know that she has um, fantastic taste and uh, I've been steered in, in a good direction by her. Uh, several times in the past. But one of the books that she talked about in this video is The Outrun by Amy Lipscomb.
Slip Trot, which is a book that I am very interested in reading. It is about the author's struggles with alcohol. I think uh, the, the nature element of it is probably uh, kind of like the memoirs that uh, where the author finds a connection with nature as a way to ground them or as a way to connect with the world uh, after challenging uh, moments of their life. Uh, and that is something that I can definitely, uh, that I often really like in nature books. Even though I tend to prefer the sciencey side of things, uh, this one also has, uh, supposedly has some swimming involved. Uh, and you all know that I love swimming related writing. Uh, so I am really interested in reading this and watching her video just sort of reinvigorated me to want to read this book. And then a video that I wanted to highlight again is Scally Dowling about the books uh, is the channel made a Springathon poetry challenge tag uh, where she basically chose um, five five poems that are um, based on the prompts of the Springathon where you are encouraged to read them, to react to them, and to, if you want, uh, choose five poems of your own to go along with the prompts. Um, I am planning to do this one. I haven't um, I haven't started working on it yet because I have to sort of sort out my um, poetry axis first. Um, but I think it's just such a wonderful idea and I think there's a lot of nature related poetry out there. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it as a challenge to get me to read more poetry as well, which is something that I'm really wanting to make uh, an effort with uh, since reading uh, Bert's, um, since reading Bert's collection, Hey Bert, uh, in April, yes, in April, uh, it has sort of, uh, again, reminded me of how much I enjoy poetry. So even though it's not something that I'm very comfortable or uh, very used to reading, it's something that I often enjoy when I do. So um, I definitely want to make that an effort. And I think this challenge will be a perfect reason for doing so. Another video that I really wanted to mention here is Actual Spinster made a eco-political reading suggestions uh, video where she basically started off by reviewing Rebecca Solnit's Wonderlust, I think. Uh, one of Rebecca Solnit's books, definitely. And she started talking about it and sort of deconstructed some of the problems with it, in her opinion. And I thought the review itself was really thoughtful. I have very little personal um, personal experience with this writer, but I thought that her review was really thoughtful and um, and critical in good way in a good way. And in connection with the review, she also gave some of her own suggestions for books that talk about um, the environment and um, the and climate change and things related to it. So uh, one of the books that she talked about is uh, *The Living Mountain* by Nan Shepard, which is generally a, uh, which is actually a book that has again come up again and again during the Springathon from various sources. I know that, for example, uh, one of my hosts, uh, Juliana, also talked about this author, and um, as I think one of her favorite nature writers. So this is a book that is supposedly really uh, beautifully written and written, and uh, I think sort of has a blend of fiction and nonfiction, or sort of a, a very strong prose writing that is almost sort of genre bending. Uh, I don't really know much about what it's actually about, other than it is nature and it's supposedly really beautifully written. Um, but it's definitely one that I've had my eye on, and especially after hearing a lot of good things about it through various uh, people, I become increasingly interested in it. And then lastly, I wanted to mention three channels that have made Springathon reading blogs. There's been several uh, others that I haven't had the time to watch yet, uh, but the, uh, the three channels I wanted to mention have all talked about one specific book that has been, that has made it to my TBR list um, because of them talking about it. And the channels, it's, uh, is What's Book In, Doris from Aldi Books, and Heidi from My Reading Life. They have all talked about the story of more by Hope Jaren, which is supposedly a sort of primer for climate change uh, discussion and knowledge. And I think um, the way that they've talked about it has made me really want to, to pick it up, both because it seems like it's really accessible and sort of an overview of the topic,
topic and I think that is always something valuable and I feel like even though climate change is something that I am constantly hearing about, I don't necessarily feel like I'm covered on my all of my bases and I'm constantly confronting new areas of the reality of climate change. So I think that this will be a really good one to both to have and to read. Uh, so I think, uh, I'm not sure if I will be buying it or if I will be borrowing it from the library first. Uh, either way, it's probably going to happen sometime during the summer. And um, I did enjoy Lab Girl, but I think this will be more to my taste uh, from the description of it. Uh, all three channels enjoyed the book uh, and what they said about it definitely sold me on it more. So that is all I wanted to share with you for my uh, books that I've been, that I've become excited about post Springathon slash Springathon inspiration from both from the Instagram challenge and from people doing videos about it on booktube. Uh, I just wanted to sort of uh, mention a few channels and people that have made interesting content and of course there's a lot of other ones. Uh, during the Springathon, Emma was uh, gathering all of the videos that she could find on the Springathon into a playlist and that is still available so I will link that below so you can sort of catch up as I'm doing with all of the videos and all of the great content. And the same with the Springathon challenge on Instagram. Uh, I found so much inspiration and saved so many posts uh, to write down a sort of a master list, I think, uh, with all of the things that I found. And uh, yeah, it's it's something that I feel like there should be a readathon for every genre so that it, it, we can all gather the resources that way. It's so helpful, um, both even for me as someone who feels quite settled in the genre or I feel like I have a fairly good idea of what's out there. Uh, I still have learned about so many books. Uh, so yeah, it's been so fun and I wanted to make this video as my last raw for the Springathon readathon. Uh, uh, before checking in with my May wrap up. Uh, so that was all I wanted to share today. I hope you have found some inspiration either through this video or generally through the readathon. And I hope you are having a good day and that you're taking care of yourselves. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.